Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to be reading a book to travel across America called Alice Across America. And this story is about the first women's cross-country road trip. And this is way back a long time ago in 1909. Let me read you the description of what we're going to read about. It says, from the moment Alice Ramsey slid behind a steering wheel, she was crazy about cars. So in 1909, when the Maxwell Briscoe Company challenged her to drive one of their new cars across the country as a promotional ploy to prove that even a lady could do it. Alice daringly accepted. This brazen driver and her three friends endured many hardships over the course of a remarkable two-month journey, far surpassing all expectations. With a clever blend of women's history, technological advances, and American roading geography, this is a celebration of unstoppable women making strides in 20th century America. We hope you enjoy the reading of this book and traveling this week across America to my hometown of Florence, Oregon. Have a great day. When Alice Ramsey was little, she loved to ride horses, small ones, tall ones, as long as she was going places. Alice was happy. But as Alice grew up, more people were driving cars. She was curious about the new machines that she still continued to ride. Until one day when a metal monster spooked Alice's horse. After the frightening incident, Alice's husband, John, had an idea to keep her safe. John believed that cars were more reliable than horses. They didn't get scared. From the moment Alice slid behind the driver's wheel, she was in love. She even entered a two-day endurance run to test her driving skills. She earned a perfect score and wowed a fellow driver who worked for Maxwell Briscoe, the makers of Alice's car. At dinner, after the first day's run, her fellow driver, the care maker's publicist, had a proposal for Alice. He asked if she would drive from New York to California in a new Maxwell car to show the world that the cars were so well built and easy to operate that even a lady could drive one safely. He didn't think women were as good at doing things as men, and he wasn't the only one. The trip sounded challenging, partly because so many roads on the route were unpaved. Also, while the Maxwell Company would offer help to Alice in the form of a guide car, and in most states she might sometimes need to rely on her own repair skills to keep the car running. Still, Alice was intrigued. She was about to show the Maxwell publicist and the world that ladies could drive just as well as men, maybe even better. She told him she'd do it and that she'd bring some friends. Alice prepares for her drive. As the Maxwell Company ran notices about the trip in newspapers across the country, Alice continued to hone her skills like cleaning spark plugs and changing tires. The more she could do on her own, the better prepared she'd be. Nine months later, on a rainy June morning in New York City, Alice and her three friends started their journey. Alice's friends, Hermione, eagerly looked toward the western horizon where California was waiting. Alice's sister-in-law, Nettie, and Maggie shivered as Alice cranked the car to start it. Armed with a camera, guidebooks, maps, and some emergency. emergency food rations, they were as ready as they'd ever been. On this day, driving might have felt different to Alice, perhaps a little scary, like the first time she'd rid ridden a horse. Still, she had skills and knowledge that she was eager to put to the test, and this was the perfect opportunity. As the car rumbled down the rain-soaked road, picking up speed, Alice's nerves disappeared. Hermione even asked 
if Alice would give her driving lessons, lessons when they got home. Over several days, the, they blazed through Cleveland and soared toward Chicago. Nothing could slow them down except bump, rattle, bang. They got their first flat tire, and they haven't even reached Toledo. Once Alice made repairs, they journeyed into Chicago, where the, where the car was hit in a traffic jam. No one was hurt, although a hubcap was dented. They stayed in the city for three days before continuing to blaze a trail westward, hoping for miles of blue sky. But as days went on and they crossed the west of the Mississippi, Mississippi River, the skies over Iowa became dark. The car wheezed and stalled, overheated from a hard day's travel. Herman sighed. They were stuck, but Alice knew what they needed, water to cool the radiator. Nettie and Maggie exchanged a look. The well-to-do sisters grabbed their cut glass toilet jars and carefully scooped up water ounce by ounce from a nearby ditch. Alice's friends were helping her on the journey without ever taking the wheel. As they drove on, heavy rains turned the dirt road into a muddy mess. Where's the river in their path? had risen too high to cross, forcing them to wait for the rain to let up and the river to recede. With no town in sight, they would have to camp in the car. When they were finally ready to set off again, the mud had other ideas. Farmers had to be fetched from a nearby farmhouse to help tow the car to safety. At last they were back on the road. Soon people began waiting by the roadside to catch a glimpse of the woman who changed flat tires, repaired broken brake pedals, and cleaned spark plugs. Some folks didn't believe Alice and her team would ever would ever reach California, but others were excited and showed up to cheer the woman on their way. Sometimes Alice gave interviews to local newspapers, but her mind was elsewhere, focused on their maps and directions to ensure they stayed on course. Alice found herself driving faster through the Midwest, hoping they'd reach a town soon, when bump, rattle, bang! They landed in a pothole more stubborn than Alice herself. They would have to fix this quickly. It was nearly dark. Alice started to have doubts. There had been people along the journey who disapproved of her being a woman and wanting to drive. There were still those who thought she wouldn't make it. The only way to silence everyone's doubts, including her own, was to reach California, no matter how many potholes stood in the way. Alice had to keep going. She could keep going. She had gotten them this far after all, driving for more than a month to reach a part of the country she'd never seen. With some quick thinking, she could cross any distance, solve any problem. As they sped west, Alice followed the trails of, of old wagon tracks. She led them through a Nebraska town where the road was blocked by a sheriff and his men searching for an escaped criminal. It took nearly two hours to catch him before the women were able to move on. The next day, they were back on the road and headed to Wyoming. Their directions he here were sometimes unclear, so Alice began following the wires of telegraph poles, trusting them to lead her toward towns. Two days after entering the state, Alice was exhausted, having crossed the North Platte River on a railroad bridge. Luckily, Hermione spotted a roadside hotel, but it turned out the hotel's beds were already occupied by bedbugs. Back on the road, Alice pressed the gas. California was on the horizon. Of course, things weren't easy. Sometimes they hit dead ends, forcing them to backtrack for miles, still stifling heat. And sometimes there was, more, uh, was a little more to eat than corn flakes and canned tomatoes scrounged from a general store. But nothing, not hunger, hot days, chilly rain, washed out roads, or the worst mud could stop Alice now. 
One day, as they drove into the view of the towering mountains, slopes, where ancient sequoia trees stood tall and proud, Alice, Alice's stomach flipped. The looming Sahara Nevada mountains and their strange trees could mean only one thing, California. They had done it. A terrific crowd greeted Alice's group in San Francisco on a cold August day. Their car was more more tan than green from all the dust gathered on its two-month, nearly 4,000-mile journey. Alice waved to many strangers who weren't laughing but cheering as she drove in a motorcade with horns blaring in celebration. Now the world understood a lady could drive just as well as a man or even better. Over miles and miles of unpaved roads through rough weather conditions, brave Alice had become guide, mechanic, and leader of her group and the first female driver to successfully cross the country. Author's Note, The Life and Legacy of Alice Ramsey. Alice Hewler Ramsey was born November 11, 1886, and died September 10, 1983. She was one of the first prominent female drivers, the first woman to complete a cross-country America road trip, and the first woman to earn a place in the Automotive Hall of Fame. She grew up in Hackensack, New Jersey, and attended Vassar College from 1903 to 1905. Then she married John Ramsey and had a son. Only a year after she first slid behind the wheel, the 22-year-old housewife and mother embarked on a drive across America on June 9, 1909 to help the Maxwell Briscoe Company promote its cars, a journey no woman and only a few men had ever driven. At a time when women couldn't vote and were expected to keep out of traditional roles, Alice would not stay home. After all, she had already driven in and won an endurance race against many male competitors, while her husband didn't even know how to drive. There were many hardships in Alice's path from New York to California, not least of which were the physical demands of such a journey. The car's crankshaft handle was heavy and hard to turn. Yet Alice had to do so multiple times a day. The car's retractable roof, roll-up windshield, and open side design also meant she was often exposed to the elements, heat, cold, dust, and plenty of wind and rain. The Maxwell Company hired a newsman, J.D. Murphy, to precede the women by train and arrange for food and lodging and of course, to do interviews. The company also provided local escorts, replacement parts, and mechanics for the larger repairs. But it was up to Alice to plan her driving route and deal with whatever challenges came up. From Alice's resourcefulness in using telegraph wires to guide her from town to town, to her self-taught skills as a mechanic so that she could handle many of the car's breakdowns on her own. Allison steadily blazed a trail for other women to follow as she fearlessly drove toward California. After Alice's successful trip, which wound up taking 59 days, over 3,800 miles of road, only 152 miles of which was paved, the Maxwell Briscoe Company eventually absorbed as part of the Chrysler Group, started calling its Maxwell DA the car a lady could drive. Though Alice and her friends attracted crowds of admirers and had the support of the Maxwell Briscoe Company, their journey was also met with disapproval. Some newspapers of the early 1900s called the trip ridiculous. Others said the drive was beyond the capabilities of women drivers. In her 1961 memoir, Veil, Duster, and Tire Iron, which gives a rich account of her journey, Alice said, This criticism, of course, merely whetted the appetites of those of us who were convinced we could drive as well as most men. It's been done by men, 
and as long as they have been able to accomplish it, why shouldn't I? Although Alice's accomplishments largely faded from public memory, the landscapes of American drivers changed drastically over time. Alice paved the way for female drivers by reaching the finish line in California. After that historic 1909 trip, she continued to do what she loved best, cruise the open road. She made at least 30 more cross-country drives, and in all that time, only ever received one ticket in California for making an illegal U-turn. But she didn't let that keep her off the road for long. The Main Street of America a note about cars from Alice's time to today. Cars have been around for a long time, longer than you might think. As far back as the 1770s, people were trying to invent ways to get from one place to another in record time. In 1885, a German inventor named Carl Benz created the first gas-powered motor car. These cars reached a top speed of 10 miles per hour. That may seem slow, but back then it was a big deal. Carl Benz's wife, Bertha, was also a big deal. In 1888, she took one of the cars for a 66-mile drive, becoming the first person to take a long-distance automobile trip. While on the drive, she invented brake lining, improving the safety of cars something Alice Ramsey would value 20 years later. Soon, gas-powered cars became more common in America. In 1908, just one year before Alice's big drive, Henry Ford introduced the Model T, a mass-produced car intended for ordinary families. Expensive at first, the Model T's prices dropped by more than half in the next 10 years, with Ford's innovations in assembly line production. By the end of its run in 1927, more than 15 million Model T's had rolled out of Ford factories. As cars became widely produced and affordable for families, the need for paved roads became evident. A huge network of paved roads known as Route 66 was perhaps the most famous U.S. highway. Designed in 1926, the route was 2,448 miles long, stretching from Chicago to Los Angeles through eight states, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. Route 66 made it easier for people from one city or town to travel to another and for companies to send goods from one place to the next. The route became known by many affectionate names like the Mother Road and the Main Street of America. With America's economic prosperity after World War II, Businesses like diners, gas stations, motels, and even tourist attractions sprang up along the route. Its roads were flat and easily accessible, and among the route's many attractions was the first ever McDonald's. Shortly after the war, Route 66 was displaced by something even bigger, the interstate highway system. President Dwight D. Eisenhower was inspired to create this larger, more efficient highway system when he was fighting in the war in Germany. Their huge network of high-speed roads allowed the military to travel quickly, and he wanted to bring that same mobility to America. The wide, limited-access expressways would bypass local towns to avoid congestion making it easier to get out of cities in case of emergency, and making coast-to-coast -coast travel much quicker. Cars and highway systems meant Americans who owned vehicles could travel more, walk less, and live farther away from their jobs, shaping the suburbs that many of us live in. Alice was part of a movement that greatly changed the structure and culture of America making it a place that we know today.